Welcome back to County Connections. If you smoke e-cigarettes, this next story might affect you. Our nation is in the midst of a grave and fast-growing public health crisis. Across the country and here in San Diego County, vaping is making people sick. Vaping is another word for the use of e-cigarettes, which use a battery to heat a liquid that forms vapors called aerosols, which are then inhaled. As a county, uh, we are leading in San Diego and calling for a ban on flavored products that target our children and a moratorium on the untested vaping devices until such time as the public health risks have been properly assessed. There's a lot we're still learning about exactly how vaping affects people who use e-cigarettes, but it's been clearly linked to some serious lung problems. Across the country, at least 12 people have died and more than 800 injuries have been reported. And even though in California, it's against the law to sell e-cigarettes to anyone under the age of 21, vaping is becoming increasingly popular among middle and high school students. Big Tobacco has a history of targeting children and of trying to get them hooked on smoking. Years ago, they used cartoons and flavored, developed flavors like menthol to mask their taste. Now in an era where kids can't put down their phones, they're using sleek electronic devices with flavored liquid cartridges that taste like bubble gum, watermelon, and cotton candy. In San Diego, we have had 22 cases uh, associated with uh, vaping. The ages range from 17 to 70 years of age with a median age of 38. And 55% of these individuals have been males. All have been hospitalized. Thankfully, we have not had any deaths. And we're here today to stop the exploitation or to do our best to do that. So when you look at a ban on the distribution of the flavored tobacco products, that would be a big step moving forward in that direction. The Board of Supervisors approved these proposals on October 15th. If you're a veteran in search of support and services, look no further than this county program. My husband is a Marine, former Marine, now a veteran, and he got severely hurt. He was in the hospital for three weeks. He broke his neck, and Courage to Call really gave us a call. They stepped it up and they came to my rescue, basically. Randy came and sat down with me to find out what kind of needs I'm struggling with or I might be fearful about. We realized that we really needed to wrap around that family, so we were able to give them food resources, not just food resources, but we literally took them shopping and, and brought food into their home. So my husband was the breadwinner, so for me, I was, am I gonna have to go back to work? I was a, pretty much a stay-at-home mom at that time. I was like, is he gonna be okay? Is he ever gonna go back to work? I, there were so many unknowns, and she just peeled those onions, you know, Let, let's get you connected with some financial support to alleviate that for you. It's not all the heroes and smiles that we see. These veterans and active duty and, and their families, they really at a very vulnerable time in their life and we really want to come alongside them and give them a hand up and help them um, live the most successful life that they honestly deserve and that they've earned. It could be anything from housing issues, employment, um, food, utilities, pretty much any need that they may have, we work with them to get them connected to the services. When I saw the community come together and all these different pieces come in to help my family, I mean, I get emotional thinking about how many organizations helped us. About six months later, she was ready to work again to um, get back in the workforce. She reached out and we thought it was a win-win for both of us and we hired her. I think anybody who experiences a life-changing situation, they just want to give back to the people who gave to them. And that's what Courage to Call does, is they just are that constant give back type of service, you know? I mean, all of us are military affiliated, whether we're spouses or we're veterans, and we've served our country. We know what it takes to be that service member and that spouse. So to be able to service them is so gratifying. It really is. It's, it's a dream job.
For these teenagers, a little time with these animals makes their day a little easier to cope with. Hello, happy Monday, you guys. Hi, my name is Denise Davidson. I'm with the San Diego Humane Society, and we're here for our monthly visit at Juvenile Hall with our animals to visit the kids. You don't have to pet them if you don't want to. If you have a rat on your shoulder, they might pee or poop on you. So the first time I came here, it was a bit intimidating. I'm not used to gates closing. I never felt threatened. And the main issue is to focus on the animals and the kids focus on the animals. Sometimes they'll bring in uh, pet rats and the, the kids will get very scared. But after a few minutes, they kind of simmer down and they start petting it and next thing you know, they're holding it and it's a good experience. Some of the kids have never seen a guinea pig. Some of the kids have never fed a rabbit. We bring uh, vegetables with us and they're able to hand feed them. You want a rat? Okay. The whole atmosphere shifts when we walk into the room. At first they're all kind of excited, but then once you tell the kids that um, if you're calm with the animal, the animal's going to be calm with you and it really just brings everything down to kind of a quiet and kind of an easy environment. It's not tense, it's not stressful. So what's your favorite animal? You can tell even the kids that act tough or or here on serious charges really can bond with an animal and, and really take something you know that's unpleasant by being here and turn it into a pleasant experience. Did you want to try and give her something? It's joy. They Their faces light up, they smile, then they're also boisterous. They're like, oh I want to pet the dog. You guys have rats. Don't get the rat near me. I want the guinea pigs. Some of the youth here have never had pets at home. Sometimes it's their first interaction even with a dog. And so it, you can just kind of see them be scared of an animal and then within a few minutes, they're holding a pet and their eyes are lighting up. Do you want me to see if I could get you some food for her? You hear some really great stories and you hear some heartbreaking stories, but you always see their eyes when they light up and they see a dog that they haven't been able to touch or, or pet a rabbit that they didn't know existed that you could have as a pet or see a guinea pig and feed them cilantro. So it's really amazing that way. That's the sweetness in it. And finally, let's take a tour where compassion is the prescription for care. It's really not what people envision. When you take a look at our facility, um, it's really inviting and it's enriching and it's warm and um, I think it really has some really nice elements for recovery. This is the County of San Diego's psychiatric hospital. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, behavioral health professionals admit and assist adult patients who are experiencing a mental health emergency. All of our nurses have a, what I feel is a calling for this population, because uh, not everybody wants to work in a psychiatric um, environment. Patients come in voluntarily with family members or are brought in by law enforcement if they're showing psychiatric symptoms or behaviors that raise concerns. The Emergency Psychiatric Unit for Intervention and Patient Stabilization is usually a patient's first stop. If they're with law enforcement and have any degree of agitation or psychosis, they'll typically go into one of the triage rooms where they'll be assessed immediately upon entering the unit and uh, very rapidly will, the team will come to a decision whether or not the patient needs emergent medications to stabilize them. They are probably at their most vulnerable, their worst state, um, and really need the help and care. They're, you know, assaultive, um, they're hostile, they're yelling, whatever the case may be, the nurses understand. So I do have those numbers here and available for me if I get a little more information, okay? The work requires compassion and collaboration. Treatment teams are led by a psychiatrist and include social workers, nurses, recreation therapists, dietitians, and pharmacists. They all work together to create a comprehensive treatment plan that is tailored to the challenges and needs of each individual. I find it honestly one of the most uh, rewarding populations to work with. These are the individuals that I feel like have been overlooked by our system and that have, are really struggling, often in families with a lot of mental health issues, a lot of abuse. What those treatment plans don't often include is long-term hospitalization. Today, treatment focuses on managing mental health through continuous care, so a patient can become stabilized and then progressively move on to a less restrictive level of care. Some people are going to be released in a day or two. Some people is going to be a week or two. Some people a month or two. But the goal is always really the same. 
which is to help them get stable enough and familiar with their treatment and to help them understand and comprehend a little bit about what it is that they're struggling with, and then to help people get connected to services. However, these are adults with rights and freedoms. Once stabilized, they can simply refuse further treatment, unless it is a matter of life or death. In those rare exceptions, when a person um, remains potentially a danger to themselves or potentially a danger to others or are completely incapable of caring for themselves without treatment, the law does provide for certain interventions to be made, hopefully for just a short period of time. Interventions that can guide a patient back to stabilization and recovery. You can see the changes from when they first come in to when they're ready to leave and you can see all the progress that they've made here. It's very rewarding. To see more stories like these, follow us on social media or visit countynewcenter.com.